Hey, it's Chris, and today we're gonna be talking about maybe the most underrated thing on a Mac, the touch bar. It's something that I feel like gets a lot of unpleasant comments sent its way for really no good reason. Up, 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 up. Before you say anything, let me just say, I tested this out on Twitter and I ran a poll and lo and behold, despite all the talk that's been going around, if you just listen to public opinion, you would think, wow, nobody out there likes the touch bar. The touch bar is terrible, it's awful. Why does Apple include it? Well, look, in my little informal, unscientific poll on Twitter, it turns out that the majority of people either love the touch bar or are indifferent to it, meaning it doesn't matter one way or another. Only a small fraction of people actually said that they hated the touch bar. I'm talking about like 15%. All right, so I'm just gonna give you my opinion right now. I like the touch bar, I actually do. And in today's video, what we're gonna do is look at some tips first and some apps that can help you get the most out of the touch bar. All right, so we're gonna start out by talking about some tips and I'm gonna keep it quick. And I picked just a handful of high impact tips because I could give you dozens and dozens, but I wanna save some time so we can actually get to the apps, which I think a lot of people are gonna find even more interesting. So really, in a way, I think what this tip section is gonna end up being is sort of like just boot camp for the touch bar. All right, so let's get started here. First things first, your touch bar is actually made up of two distinct sections. On the left, you have the app controls, and that's gonna change dynamically depending on what app you have open at any given time. And then over here, you have your control strip, and that is a set of icons, a set of features that's always going to be there. Now this control strip actually has two modes, this mini view, this compact mode, and then an expanded mode. So if you hit the arrow, you're gonna get some expanded options. All right, boot camp over. Now we get into the tips. If you go up to the Apple, go to system preferences, and then click on keyboard, you're gonna get an interesting little button here. And that's this button here that lets you customize the control strip. Now watch what happens when we hit customize control strip. Boom, your screen changes and you get all these options up here and it's drag and drop. So I can select an icon, drag it down into the control strip, or I can take an icon out of the control strip. And this is just a great way to customize what you want to appear all the time. And of course, you don't have to stop there. You can expand it and customize what goes in that expanded view as well. Now for me, this is the part where I remove that Siri button, drag it out, and my life gets a lot better. Why? Because I always hit that Siri button on accident and I was so happy when I finally found out I can just get rid of it. Like if I'm gonna use Siri and you guys saw how Siri was working for me in the CarPlay video yesterday, right? That vlog. If I'm gonna use it, I'm just gonna use AirPods or activate it some other way. What am I gonna put in its place though? I like to stick dictation down there because it's something that I use frequently, all the time actually. But you know, the AirPlay option is nice if you just wanna start the screensaver or put it to sleep. I mean, all of these things are great options. Now, I never know exactly who knows what, right, on this channel. It's kinda hard to know where everybody's at in terms of their knowledge on a certain topic, but I just have to say this, it seems obvious to me, but I know not everybody knows it, holding, and dragging on the touch bar is oftentimes your friend, like what I'm doing right here. I'm adjusting the volume. So you don't have to tap it and then touch to adjust. That works for several things. That was the volume, but here's also the screen brightness, right? Nice and easy to adjust. Is that something that you can do with the physical button? Well, no, you can't. Is that one reason why the touch bar is pretty cool? Yeah. Now this next tip is so simple. It has to do with this little button hiding in the corner of my Mac's keyboard. You've been missing it all these years, I'm sure, a ton of people. And when you understand the implications, you're gonna be like, wow, what is wrong with me? How did I not know about this? But the function keys haven't disappeared just because the touch bar takes up the space that the function keys used to live in. All you gotta do is hold down the FN key down here in the corner and there's your function keys, right? Do you still hate your touch bar? I think the reasons for a lot of people to hate the touch bar are slowly disappearing throughout this video as more knowledge creeps in. Now, I absolutely love AirDrop. I can't believe that Android and Windows took so long to finally copy it and that that's finally arriving. And I'm happy for them. It's one of the best features ever, but I don't like having to pull up Finder, 
pull up the airdrop window and drag and drop stuff to my other devices. It's convenient to use airdrop, but that workflow could be improved. Well, guess what? It's really easy to improve, thanks to your touch bar. So if you open up Finder, you gotta have Finder open for this to work. Select a file, maybe I'll do this screenshot right here. And then look at this, here's a share icon right here. Hiding under this share icon is an airdrop button. And when I click on it, I get an option, a dialog just pops up to airdrop it. No drag and drop required. All right, the last one I wanna show you guys about has to do with taking screenshots. You probably already knew, Command Shift 4 is an easy way to bring up a screenshot interface where you can just drag your mouse to select whatever you wanna take a screenshot of. But the touch bar comes in extra handy here. Something I'm guessing a lot of people have been ignoring is this save to option over here, which lets you easily choose where you wanna save those screenshots. So it's set by default to desktop, but if we tap on it, then it's really easy to change it from desktop to documents to clipboard to preview. This is what I'm talking about. The touch bar is actually pretty cool. You just gotta understand it. All right, let's get into some apps. And I wanna start with an app called Pock, which is free, which is open source, which is good news for a lot of people, right? A lot of people out there get mad when I feature an app that costs some money. And what does it do? It puts your Mac dock in your touch bar. You see that? I got two docks going on right now. One on my screen and one in the touch bar. And here's something funny, this tool's been out for a while, but look at this, two escape keys, one digital, one actual. That's kind of weird. This was obviously created before the brand new 13-inch MacBook Pro landed. And honestly, this is pretty cool because what it lets you do is then hide that dock on your actual screen. I like to do that, sometimes that's my default way of doing things, and yet still have your dock available, just on the touch bar. So now you see it, now you don't. Now you see it, now you don't. Except you do, because it's still here. All right, the next app that I wanna clue you guys into is called Haptic Touch Bar. You guys know probably what that means just from me describing it. Haptic means it's gonna give you some feedback, some tactile feedback. So when you press on the touch bar, you're gonna get like a, zzz, like a, a vibration to let you know that you actually did tap something. Well, why is that good? Why does it matter? If I go in here and tap, I don't feel it. And so sometimes when you mean to tap something, you don't actually know that you tapped something. Sometimes you tap something on accident and it creates a problem, but you didn't even know that you tapped. All right, so let's try this. Oh, oh, whoa. Why wasn't this enabled by default? Can you hear it? This is awesome. Yeah, that actually really surprises me by how much feedback it gives, both audibly and taptically. Haptically, taptically, whatever. That is really, really impressive, to be honest. I don't know what to tell you. Sometimes little things actually make a big difference. All right, the next app we're gonna check out is called Touch Switcher. So what this is gonna do is let you switch apps from the touch bar. All right, so here's what we did by installing this. We added this little icon here, and if I tap on it, which is gonna sound a lot better, thanks to the last app that we just installed, then it's gonna pop out a bunch of apps. So these are the apps that I have running right now, and it's gonna let me simply switch between those. So if I wanna get Safari, I can do that. If I wanna go to iTunes, I guess it's Apple Music now, right? I'm still used to it. If I wanna go to Finder, that makes it really easy. Now I'm gonna be honest. I think I would rather have this touch switcher than Pac, if I'm being honest. If you had to pick between the two, I'd probably pick this one. Oh, and actually there's a keyboard shortcut loaded up here as well, which is option nine. It's just gonna bring it up. Oh yeah, option nine, that's very convenient. Okay, I'm gonna be honest here. I saved the best, most powerful tool for the end as a reward for everybody that stuck around. Of course, I'm talking about Better Touch Tool, which is highly recommended. It's been out for several years and it lets you very simply customize your touch bar, obviously. This is a touch bar video but it lets you customize a variety of input devices, whether that's your touchpad or your magic mouse, basically any way that you can interact with your Mac, you can customize it using Better Touch Tool. And exactly how reasonable is the pricing? Well, it's less than $10, like $8.50 or something. This is so crazy, I'm looking at all the stuff that you can customize. You can even customize what happens with your Siri Apple remote, you know, the one that you hate. Now there's a device, a touchscreen interface that Apple made, that maybe is worthy of a bad reputation, right? The Apple TV remote. That thing needs to get redesigned. And honestly, even though I've talked about it several times here on the channel, I've never actually used it. 
but this is very interesting down here and unexpected. There's an option that I can tick that says enable touch bar control by mouse. Oh, and look at this. <laughs> this, this app maybe is going, and this is why I put it last, because I kind of wondered. It looks like I can put haptic feedback settings right here and not just enable haptic feedback, but say very light feedback, strong feedback, spring light feedback, double light feedback. There's all these ways that you can customize the feedback. So this is great. It's great to have options, right? Maybe some people just want something really simple and they use one of the tools I already featured, or there's definitely power users out here who want to just change everything that they can. And that's what this tool's for. Some of this stuff is going to affect your battery, probably slightly. In fact, part of me is wondering if that's why Apple didn't enable haptic feedback to begin with just by default. All right, but hopefully you guys like this video. I hope that it gives your touch bar some new life, that you learned at least something new here today. If you wanna keep learning new stuff, then a couple things you can do. Obviously, be subscribed. Talk about all kinds of Apple stuff here and on the podcast, The Daily Tech After Party. Comes out every Friday, subscribe down below. Also, make sure that you're following at Daily Tech, spelled daily T-E-K-K, -K, on Instagram and Twitter. That would be a smart thing to do. And finally, if you haven't discovered it yet, make sure to swing by applehype.com sometime today, usually every morning is when you should check it because it gives you, I'm not even gonna tell you, I'm not gonna ruin the surprise. Go check it out if you're new and I will catch you guys in the next video, later.